It's Body Guapam, and I'm back after quite a while. Uh, I wanted to share with you all how to use the 1.2.1, 1.3b base workflow that I shared my results of, um, and is using the base uh, models. So here's the workflow that I shared on Reddit recently. Uh, basically, I also um, laid it out better and cleaned it up before I can share with y'all. Uh, so the it goes from left to right. So first here is where you'll input your input video. Ideally, it should be 81 frames. And uh, I recorded it at 1280 by 720. Uh, but the workflow actually resizes it to a resolution that works best for one, which is the 480p. So one of the main settings here that you may, you don't have to change because it's already set up this way. The height will be resized to 480 for your video and it'll retain the aspect ratio and width. The rate I used for the, or the FPS of the video was 30 in this case. And then the frame load cap is set to 81. Um, so here are a few other nodes just to display the, frame count of your video, as well as the video width and height. So the height you can see here is 480, but the width is a bit longer than 832, which is the preferred one. But uh, to compensate for that, what I do here is I have a crop node. Um, so the width will get cropped down to 832. And it's a center crop. And this is the video that we're, we're going to be feeding into the whole process, which will be a width of 832 and height of 480. And here are a few display notes showing that uh, the width is 832 and the height is 480. The second process is actually the control net group. So the video that we resized, uh, we're actually going to do uh, depth, anything V2 pre-processing. And the resolution and the height will be grabbing it from our resized video. So it'll be 480 by 832, just to have all the inputs aligned resolution-wise. This is the, um, the DW Post Estimator. It, is, it usually uses the CPU if you have it set like this. But if you set it to Torch Script, it actually uh, co compiles uh, these two models here and is able to process faster. Then those two results uh, we combine with a uh, image blend here set to screen. Uh, and then that put places the depth map over the open post uh, stick stick figure with the face details. And here you, you can see the resolution with 832 and the height is 480. Uh, and then the main part of the workflow is here, the base sampling group. Um, I'll just kind of go through the models, but if you need to get the, grab the models, they're all shared by Kijai on Hogging Face. So the VAE that I'm using in this case is this, uh, BF16, so you can download this guy. You'll, the text encoder I'm using is the FP8 one here. You'll also need the one 1.3 B model. This is the one that I'm using. And the latest model that is the one that's responsible for the base restyling. I'm using this module here. One to one base module one three B, BF16. So, so yeah, this is the BAE here. And if you'll need a little bit of a recap of where they go, in your comfy folder, uh, if you go to models, right, the VAE you place here. I usually have subfolders here for the different models. So here's that VAE. Then the diffusion models go here. These are the unit files. So if you go to one, two, 
in my case. Here you can see that I have the one to one text to vid one three b bf sixteen, as well as the base module one three b bf sixteen, and I'm using the one point three b model just because it's faster to infer and I can actually iterate more and then modify settings rather than using the fourteen b one, and the quality doesn't feel that uh, bad. But again, this is just kind of like um, I'm some of my tests to see how good the restyle could eventually be with the 14B model. And the last uh, model is the text encoder, which goes here, text encoders. I have the subfolder for one, two, and then here is the UMT5 XSL encoder FP8, safe tensors. Uh, so in the, back in the workflow, I'm actually using Torch Compile. If you can see, uh, I don't use the manager. I don't have the manager, I actually install uh, the custom nodes that I use using my Conda environment, and I was able to build uh, Triton um, using my Conda environment, and I also installed Sage Attention too, just to get a little bit of a speed when I use the one video wrapper nodes. Uh, but how to install that is a little bit out of the scope of this video, but maybe I can show in the future. Um, here, this is the block swap. If you need to use it, you can control B to use it, uh, but it's better used for the 14B model. For this case, since I'm using the 1.3B, it fits inside of uh, six, six, 16 gigs of VRAM. Uh, this is the base model here that you're kind of actually loading using this base model select node, and you pipe it into the one video model loader where you select your 1.3b model here. And I actually have it set to Sage Attention in the attention mode, but if you don't have Sage, you can set it to SDPA here. And then this is the text encoder here. So it's the FP8 one. The prompt that I used in this case was the video shows a man in a fighting pose inside a modern Japanese dojo with bonsai trees in the background. And then this is kind of like the one negative prompt that has been shared around. The style image, uh, I'm actually using an uh, image that I did with Stable Diffusion 1.5 and IP adapters of this uh, martial artist here. Uh, and it was more to try to get the vibe of the character uh, Rock Lee from Naruto. Um, that we feed into the sampling process using this one video base encode. So it actually encodes all the video frames and then the reference image is just this one image and everything else is kind of connected to be driven by the uh, resizing that we're doing uh, in the first module here. So, yep, and then these the settings are pretty much default as well. I use tcache set to 0.1, just so it helps the inference speed be faster. And then SLG, I also added just because it helps achieve better resol resolution and or better quality in the video that gets generated. And then here we go to the one video sampler node. I'm using 20 steps. CFG4, Shift 4.9, and then this was a good seed that I found. Whenever you want to try to seed surf, I usually uh, crank this down to uh, 20 steps and then set the seed to random just to find uh, a good seed. Um, and when I do that as well, I reduce the frame count so that we don't do the whole frame length of the video. So 25 is kind of what I usually use to do my testing on. And you can set this to zero just to load the full 81 frames again. And another thing to of note here is the scheduler is UniPC just because it's a bit faster to do the denoising with that uh, scheduler. Uh, but I'll set this back to 40 and set it to fixed. And I didn't want to um, render the video as I didn't want to make the video too long and have you all wait while it processes. So I ran the one 
that I shared in the Reddit post. Uh, oh, the VAE encode settings. I set I enable tiling and I set the tile X and Y to 256 and the tile stride X and Y to 128. Uh, the stride must always be lower than the tile values that you input there. And for this over here, the VAE and code node, I also turned on tile VAE just to avoid any uh, out of memory um, issues. And then the results were actually better with this new workflow that I've set up here. So yeah, it looks like this. Uh, even though the camera static in my input video, it kind of inherits my body swaying from left to right to give the camera a bit of a, a nice movement as well. Yeah, because we can see a little bit of parallax with some of the foreground elements that were added. Uh, this video output just shows a side by side of your input video with the restyled result. Uh, and then this kind of done using this image can cat node from KJ nodes. And then the last one is just a side by side video of putting the control nets 65% uh, over the input video. Um, so I didn't want to share my particular video with um, everybody. So what I actually did, um, I, put, I used the same workflow and I found a different video on Pexels, uh, which is of this martial artist. Uh, for some reason, it's not playing here, but it's uh same resolution. I found one that was 1280 by 720 pixels. And then I just trimmed it down to give me the 81 frames. And those are just the first 81 frames actually of the video. And that goes through the same workflow, like all the settings are the same here, as you can see. Uh, here, this is the resized result of the movement of the video. And this is the control net results of the depth and open pose. And then finally, uh, yeah, we're using the same input image. And then this is the final result here. Um, so yeah, that feels pretty good. Uh, the hands aren't that great as usual, but the movement uh, is pretty consistent and the restyle occurred uh, pretty well. He even has quite a nice tricep there as he's posing. Um, and the original input video, he, he's wearing like a gi outfit, uh, but that's not actually transferring since we're not using a line control net. It's actually picking up a lot of the style from my styled image input. And then this, this is the side-by-side -side result of that. And the control nets as well. So you can actually see that since the hands go over each other, the control nets get a little bit confused. So the right side arm, he kind of retains the fist when in actuality, the martial artist actor has kind of like uh, open palms instead, but it looks pretty decent. Uh, and then this isn't with any upscaling, so it could probably be improved. The quality could be improved with another upscale pass. Uh, let's just open this. And the here's my coffee post where you can actually Go and download this if you get now. Um, yeah, you can put in zero or you can, you know, do, do what you want. <laughs> and then if you download it, you'll, we'll get it here. So yeah, I hope that helps you all. Um, go ahead and play with it and show me some of your results. See y'all later.